podcast number seven, Anthony. Number seven. Could yeah. you believe that we were going to make it here? Yes, actually, I can. Like, I thought we were going to survive for seven weeks, but I seven podcasts. Yeah, number I'm, seven. I'm fairly impressed with ourselves. It's mostly you. So far, so good. Oh, it's, okay. it's mostly you. I don't think You're so. killing it. You're killing it. So are you. So every, are you. Every week hosting. Come on now. You're killing it. You're like, uh, you're like the Alex Trebek of the stock market or something, <laughs> Alex right? Alex Trebek, yeah. Okay, well, let's dive right into it. We're diving it. into We're it. We're diving right into Who it. Who are you? Who am I? I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. That's very true. I am Anthony from Wall Street Breakdown. You got your head in this, right? Oh, for sure. You're not sick anymore? No, I'm no. still a little sick. You're foggy in the brain. We're good? Oh, yeah. I'm good to go. We're going to kill this podcast. Number? Seven. 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 Woo! Woo! Let's get it going. All right. Let's look at uh, Monday, uh, November 27th. Meredith buys Time. Yeah. They bought Time, Inc. So, like, um, they didn't buy Time, like, the actual magazine. They bought the the actual the company that's spun off that owns uh, Sports Illustrated. They own People. They own Fortune. Meredith's obviously a publisher already. Uh, they operate at Des Moines, Iowa. They already have about a million unique visitors to their website. They, they've basically taken what is a few magazines that do relatively okay, I guess, as far as publishing goes. I mean, publishing's not doing that great anymore. But they've turned it into a relatively decent little media company so they drive a lot of traffic to their websites and stuff like that they, they do a fairly good job uh, bringing in obviously these big names sports illustrated people magazine fortune these are some really really big names yeah um that they're bringing in what should be enough content to really justify the purchase if they are able to translate these companies as well into the type of media viewership that they get now. So it's going to really end up being a lot of website clicks, the monetization right. through advertising and stuff like that. Um, they paid $1.84 billion for this. So that's a lot of money they oh, paid yeah. for it. Uh, $650 million of that $1.84 billion came from the Koch brothers who were really... I mean, if you follow politics or anything, they're very much uh, lobbyists. They know what they like. They've got a lot of money. They're some of the richest men in the United States. They go out and they uh, they let their money do the talking for them. Six hundred fifty million. It's it's preferred equity. Uh, they're not going to have any say on the board of directors. Apparently, they really like the way Meredith runs their company, so they're going to let Meredith continue to do their thing. The thing is, is Meredith's tried to buy this this portion of Time Inc. before, right? So they tried this in twenty thirteen. They tried this earlier this year. I imagine a lot of this probably hinges on the fact that they didn't have the $650 million and the influence of the Koch brothers oh, to actually not. have this go through. So now they're going to end up having this go through. Um, there's 135 million readers in, in combination. If you take into the, the, the magazines, the publications that Meredith has already, and then you add in the stuff that Time Inc. has, it's about 135 million readers a month. Uh, unfortunately, the 135 million readers doesn't translate to money. They've only right. got about 60 million paid subscribers to these magazines. So the paid readership, well below the actual readership numbers. But still, a lot of people out there apparently reading periodicals. I didn't, I didn't know magazines were that. I, other than a, I doc, thought they were a thing of the past. Other than a doctor's office, or like That's I see, very true. Yeah. I see them in Seven Eleven. Like you walk in and they have like a, a stand for yeah. magazines. But I thought that was like. Like an old museum. Yeah, like I, yeah. Had, I didn't realize those were new like this month. Apparently, didn't know they still made them. Yeah, I didn't know they still made magazines. Right, I, it is what it is. I, I mean, we're kidding, obviously. Oh yeah, there's, of course. there's obviously magazines and newspapers out there, but it's a it's a dying industry for the most part. And again, this is going to translate, I think, to a lot of media. It's not going to translate so much into the actual publications going forward. I mean, there is going to still be these publications, Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. Sure. You know, like I'll read Fortune magazine. If if I can find it somewhere, if it's, somebody happens to have it, it's laying around, I'll, I'll flip through it and stuff like that. But it's not anything that's, I'm not going to go out of my way to get my, get a subscription to it. Whereas oh, yeah. when you were a kid, I'm sure you used to have subscriptions to magazines, oh, for sure. right? Like yeah. I used to get the WWF magazine, yeah, oh, all, yeah, that, yeah. all that kind of, not the Panda Bear WWF, uh, okay. but the old, the, the guys in their underwear, yes, the yeah. greased up underwear guys. So Meredith closed the week 5790. Eh, people aren't super keen on the news, I don't think, in the marketplace. I don't, I don't think it's really moving the needle at all. But it ended up being, I think, it was bigger news probably because Sports Illustrated people and Fortune are such big brands. Right. And then yeah. when you talk about the Koch brothers being involved in it, I think that also gets a lot of people's attention just because of, uh, they're known for pushing pushing around. They they throw their weight around quite a bit. Oh, they, sure do they do it in presidential races. They do it when they want to, right. how they want to. 
I kind of I kind of like the way the cut of their jib. Cut of their jib. Yeah, I yeah, like the I way they go that, do yeah. their thing, right? So uh, yeah, so Meredith buys Time Inc. Uh, One point eight four billion dollars sounds like a lot, but they're going to have to learn how to monetize monetize these properties into making them some money in a in an internet age, not in a publication. Oh, age. for sure, yeah. absolutely. Uh, let's move on to one of our favorite topics. You know, it's Bitcoin, isn't it? Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, we actually got news for Bitcoin even today. So I'll conglomerate everything from Bitcoin this week into this. Uh, so Bitcoin, it, it crossed ten grand, Then it crossed 11000 or got to 11000 or close to it. Uh, we had a pretty significant pullback to 9000 which happened really over the course of like 24 hours. There's 15 plus cryptocurrencies out there, not including Bitcoin, which is valued at like 160 plus billion dollars that are worth over a billion. So like, okay, so you got 15 of them. You think only one of them is going to do it. So I mean, let's, let's, let's just break it down, right? So who's going to win this out of all these cryptocurrencies? If somebody wins it, who's going to win it? Probably Bitcoin. It's probably going to be Bitcoin. Oh, for right? sure. Yeah. So what is the point of even these other currencies being valued at this? I have no idea. That in and of itself tells me that, A, Bitcoin is way over expensive. It's, it's out of a lot of people's reach to be invested in. Right. And people are grasping at straws trying to find something to get invested in. So they're trying to get invested in the cryptocurrency oh, sure, market, yeah. assuming that there's going to be implementation for all 15 of these currencies. Oh, I doubt that. Yeah. No, I absolutely doubt absolutely that, right? Doubt so that. for 15 of them to be worth over a billion dollars... It, it to me screams of again this speculative bubble. People want to believe this is this is what happened in the dot com bubble. Was everybody that got a dot com yeah. all of a sudden went IPO and their stuff went crazy. They were up hundred percent in the week that they they did their public yeah. offering. This kind of says the same thing that just because you have a dot com, I don't think that necessarily is going to translate into you being successful on the internet. Oh no, no! Just because you've got a cryptocurrency in a market space where cryptocurrencies happen to be popular doesn't necessarily mean that you're all of a sudden going to be the cryptocurrency that's adopted. If one of them is even adopted on a yeah, on a sure. government scale, on a mainstream scale, right? Like that. That's my my thing, and that's my gripe with this from the beginning is that who is going to go out and disable their own federal banking system to then adopt this non-fiat currency as the default currency. Mm. Like we heard today that like, or not today, but this week that um, the tax department in the United States wants all the records of anybody who's done transactions, I believe over 15 or $20,000 in Bitcoin. So there there's, there's people coming. The, oh, ta sure. the tax man's coming. Oh, He's yeah. coming to get his cut right. yep. because you can't just be doing this in the shadows. That's not going to work. No, no. So you're going to have a lot of fluctuating. We talked about this last week on the podcast where it seemed like a lot of kids probably went home for Thanksgiving. That's right. Sat down with grandma and grandpa and mom and dad who have heard of Bitcoin but have not been able to practically place where this is actually going to going to find a foothold and they convinced them of this millennials went ahead and yes, tried, yes. because that's who's in on this is oh, millennials. Sure. and when we hear the cmes adopting futures trading on this i think the nasdaq's actually going to go ahead and do that now as well um so what we're hearing and a lot of the people that are big proprietors of this are saying that well this gives people a chance to short a bitcoin position if they wanted to as well and i'm not advocating any kind of shorting and like that's that's as dangerous as being involved in Bitcoin. I mean, you've really got to know what you're doing if you're going to go out and, and short sell something. Uh, but Bitcoin, it's it's just it is what it is. Today, Bitcoin bumped itself up significantly again. Uh, it got just shy of twelve thousand. Oh wow! So again, record high. And then uh, over the course of a couple of hours, it dropped off pretty considerably, about thirteen hundred dollars. Oh, and then it bounced back up to eleven thousand four hundred. In a matter of, I mean, this was in a matter of hours. And this tells you how speculative things, nothing bounces like that when no. there's a fixed price of something. When something's worth something, it's you, worth don't, that. you don't walk into Walmart and see prices fluctuating like that. No, never, And Walmart never. doesn't see that from their distributors. So there's nowhere in the chain of, of, uh, of people purchasing or, or developing or manufacturing anything where prices fluctuate this vast. When it fluctuates as vast, it's it's really scary. So oh, Co yeah. Coinbase has been at, which is the main trading platform for Bitcoin. Coinbase has been adding hundred thousand users a day. Basically, uh, it is significant growth over there. This is the thing that's 
it, th this could this could destroy a lot of people. In an economy when everything's been up, markets are up so significantly. I mean, we talk about the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones hit record highs this week, up over 24,000. I think they close the week 24,231. I mean, they're up eight straight months. They've been up since March, eight straight months. Um, the only down month this year in the, in the calendar year 2017 was March, and it was down like 0.9%. The only yeah. point nine, and when you consider in dividends, when you take into in consideration people getting paid out dividends and stuff right. like that, that month isn't even considered down net neutral. It's not down. It's actually up still because you're not you're just considering the price of the stock, okay. not what people are actually receiving from owning those stocks. So when you take into consideration people being paid the dividend, even March was an up month. If December is an up month, this will be the first time in a calendar year since nineteen. 28 since they've been tracking this basically that the Dow Jones is up every month. Oh wow. So it's up every month. It's it's at an all-time high. S&P hits all-time highs, Nasdaq yeah. all-time highs, Russell 2000 all-time highs. Why would you go ahead in years and years and years of things being up all-time highs and then go and invest your money in something so speculative to watch yourself basically lose all your gains possibly. For sure. Yeah. You Why go to the you? gym, you want to lose all your gains? No, I worked hard for that. Absolutely, right? I don't, want to lose, I don't want to lose my gains either. So Bitcoin, it bounces around like crazy. We have to cover this every week because millennials are all over TV talking about this. Oh, for sure. Yeah, they are. The financial news networks, they have their own little drop-down boxes on the actual, like when you go to their websites, the drop down box yeah. at the top, a lot of them have Bitcoin as the second or third. Really? It's the it's a main topic of conversation, no matter what. It is so speculative. Run away. Run. Run from the cryptocurrencies. <laughs> Too many things are up to be worried about yeah. dealing in Bitcoin. So there you have it, Bitcoin, even today, all over the board, closing. It's like 11.4 right now, but by the time this is up, I'm sure it'll be 13, then it'll be 2. Oh, I'm sure it'll be something. Who yeah. knows what's Who knows? going on there. That wraps up the news from Monday to 27th. Let's move on to Tuesday to 28th. Uh, we got an earnings call from Scotiabank. Yeah, Bank of Nova Scotia. So up here in Canada, it's, it's earnings season for our financial companies. Uh, financial institutions in Canada are very, very strong. Uh, they've been up basically 12% across the board since their previous earnings in, in August. Bank of Nova Scotia didn't have the greatest of earnings calls at all. Missed on EPS, missed on REVs. Uh, REVs are only up 0.9% year over year. Capital markets for the Bank of Nova Scotia down 15% year over year. Trading revenue was down 42%. Wow. That is a drop. That is such a drop. And that that's, is, that's yeah. mainly a, a fixed income and commodities drop, but still down 42% is rough. Uh, international banking up 12%. So they are growing on the international banking market. And in inter international banking news on top of this, uh, they put in a $2.9 billion bid to buy uh, BBVA is another bank. They own a, a segment of a bank in Chile, BBVA's Chile. Um, so they want to buy 68% of that, which is the amount that BBVA owns of this of, Ch of their Chilean department down there. So they, they posted $2.9 billion the bid. The thing is, though, is uh, the Syed family, they own the other 31 and a little bit percent down there, and they have final say on if this goes through. Right. So the Bank of Nova Scotia is definitely hinging on that, but they're trying to broaden their reach internationally. They're, they're not pulling any punches. They're trying to grow. The Canadian banks are strong. They got a lot of money. Growing is definitely what they've got to do. They, they've saturated the market up here in Canada. Oh, yeah, yeah. We don't have a, a regional banks like the United States does. No. We, we have the, you know, like there's the Western Heritage Bank and ATB. Yeah. And there's a couple smaller ones, right? But there is not the regional banks like there is in the U.S. that still in, in, encompass a lot of clients, a lot of customers and billions in revs. Right. Up here, it's five really big banks that yeah. re really cover the gamut of stuff. Off. So you need to be able to, to branch out. And when you're doing as good as the Canadian banks have been doing for phew, forever, basically, Canadian banks are so strong internationally. They're phenomenal when compared to other banks. You need to be able to branch out other places. So $2.9 billion to, to, to buy this BBVA Chile division, uh, that would double their market share in, in Chile because Bank of Nova Scotia is already down in Chile. So this would double their market share down there from 7% to 14%. Okay. That's a pretty good foothold. Oh, for sure. In a country that, I mean, when you think Bank of Nova Scotia, you're not thinking Chile. That's in South yeah. America. Yeah. Pretty, pretty well removed from Canada, right? But... 
Bank of Nova Scotia is out there trying to make some moves. It was not the greatest earnings call, probably the worst of the earnings calls out of any Canadian bank that we've had so far. Bank yeah. of Montreal still next Tuesday. Uh, they closed the week 64.45, and that was down basically off the earnings call. It, they went in a little higher than that, and it's it, it was a it was a miss, and the marketplace definitely adjusted the price for their miss. That's yeah, Bank of Nova Scotia. They uh they didn't set the right tone. All the banks kind of took a hit from that, but we did have some better earnings calls from other banks yeah, we did. as the week went on. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let's look at AT&T. Uh, goes to court with the Department of Justice. Yeah, they're fighting it, right? Uh, Randall Stevenson, uh, the CEO of AT&T, thinks that the Department of Justice basically overstepped their bounds. They think the, that their market share, even compared, when you when you combine Time Warner and AT&T, still is not justifiable enough for the Department of Justice to block this so significantly, this $85 billion merger that we're talking about or acquisition, whatever you want to call it. It's been it's been ironed out for over a year. They're ready to get this done. This is the this was the final roadblock and it's a big one. We'll see, I guess, what happens. They want this done fairly expediently. They think the Department of Justice has been dragging their feet with giving the approval and then obviously the approval not taking place now. So, I mean, we're going to end up seeing, but AT&T sounds like they're pretty steadfast with fighting this. Um, they, they filed with the SEC to push the closing date to sometime in April of 2018. So they want this taken to court. They want this done quickly. The Department of Justice feels like if these two, these two companies get together, that there's the potential for other companies having to pay significant amounts of money to be able to use AT&T Time Warner media content. That's more the okay. issue. It's not yep. the issue with the telecom part. It's the issue a lot more with the the content, the media content. And okay. then other broadcasters are going to have to pay a lot of money in markets that AT&T and Time Warner aren't in. They're going to say, yeah, you want to have our content. You're going to pay us. You you're know, gonna pay, yeah, yeah, you're going to pay a yeah. boatload of money to get this. So the Department of Justice is worried about that. I would imagine that AT&T... Randall Stevenson, they're going to go in and they're going to try to make some sort of an augmentation and say like, we'll guarantee some sort of a price or there's going, okay, to, yeah. there's going to be some negotiation to try to get this done because they didn't just walk away from this deal. No, no this no. wasn't SoftBank and Deutsche Telekom saying like, oh, Sprint and T-Mobile, it's not going to work. We'll walk away. Yeah. These two want to get this done. They think it's right for business. Personally, I think it's right for the telecom and the, and the media uh, industries. They're going to fight to get this done, and I think they're probably going to make any concession that they have to within within reason to have the Department of Justice and the court system decide that this could go through. So yeah. they're, they're, ma they're making a push to get it done, AT&T AT digging their heels in. you got to like it. If you think it's right for business, yeah, why not right? It? If it's right for yeah. business, you do it. So AT&T, yeah, yeah they, they think it's right for business. I say... Uh, I say hammer the point home, right? Take them to court. <laughs> exactly. That's the, that's the beauty of the United States. Litigation, right? <laughs> yeah. You don't like it? Take them to court. Uh, let's talk about Apple's iPhone X's uh, Black Friday sales. Yeah. they. I mean, Black Friday as a whole destroyed numbers. There were so many companies that came out and said that they had the record numbers. The Red Book chain store sales were unbelievable for that week. So we heard JCPenney... Um, Macy's, Kohl's, there were a bunch of companies said that they just destroyed company records on Black Friday. But Apple, in and of itself, sold around, and again, this is analyst estimates, this is Rosenblatt saying that this is what they assume, but they sold 6 million Apple iPhone X's. That's a lot. That is a lot of That's phones. A lot of phones. That is a lot of really high-end expensive phones. Yes. So uh, on top of that, uh, Rosenblatt says they're making about 3 million of these phones as of right now every week. And they feel like within the next month, they're going to get the iPhone X up to about 4 million devices made every week, manufactured, ready to get sold. So they're definitely ramping that up as well. Apple, a phenomenal company, closed the week $171.65. It's up slightly off this news. But uh, it, Apple's already been up so much. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah with the watch and everything, the yeah. release of the iPhone earlier this year, right? Like the, yeah. the earlier the stuff. Eight or whatever. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. eight and what, what's the other one called? The plus, eight plus. The plus, or, eight yeah, plus yeah, yeah. So like they were already up with numbers being relatively decent for that. The watch killing it. The, oh yeah. The watch, the watch is, is nice. The watch is destroying stuff. Yeah. Right. Like that's sold out. It's doing great. Um, the 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 plus is doing really good. The regular the iPhone eight wasn't doing the numbers they wanted it to do. But again, it looked like a lot of people were holding off to get a hold of the iPhone X. Oh, for sure. Why wouldn't And you? 6 million sold on Black Friday. 
And then you see, like I said, you see all these other companies name the saying that they're having record days. Redbook chain store sales, like I mentioned earlier, came in, and we know that the economy's been up. The economy's been up for years, right? Yeah. This is not an anomaly just this year. Redbook chain store sales for the week of Black Friday up four point eight percent year over year. Oh wow! So that's a basically five percent sales from last year when the economy was strong, and. The only caveat I would have on this is we've seen every time an economy starts doing good, credit starts becoming more and more available. You start wondering how much if this is easy borrowed money that people might be spending. It's Christmas time. It could be a potential where people end up putting out money that they don't necessarily have. I'm not saying that's happening. We are seeing very nominal increases in defaults with yeah. Visa, Amex, MasterCard. It's very nominal at the, this point, but it, it could go up obviously relatively significantly if the economy plateaus or God forbid, takes a bit of a nosedive right now. Totally not a nosedive. We're not saying that any of this is people overextending themselves with credit. Redbook chain store sales the Black Friday week up ridiculous. Apple's iPhone selling off the shelves. I mean, it's a, it was a good week. Oh, for sure. It was well, a good yeah. week for shoppers. Yes. If you're definitely. out doing Christmas shopping, you, uh, you, you and Santa, are, <laughs> you're happy. Very you're happy. Very, very happy. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> you, you wonder how much this is going to affect the, the number, that 4.8% year over year number. How much that's going to affect sales going into Christmas? I wonder. I, I mean, yeah, I wonder that too. We talked about this, I think, last week that I wonder how much Black Friday hasn't become kind of like an event. Where, right, like a boxing day almost. Yeah, where people go out and they spend a significant amount of their allocated money for Christmas. And then as the weeks trick on, they're, they're, you're not maybe going to see the same sort of sales until maybe the 22nd or 23rd right, yeah. when there's the rush on things. And I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just wondering if we haven't created kind of a holiday where people are expected to spend money, so they feel obligated to do it. I think we might have. We might have. I think I think we might have, much like Valentine's Day. We've, oh, for we've sure. We've created a holiday yes. to take that money back into the system. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right? We, we yeah. had to find a way to get money back into the monetary system. Yeah. So we're like, hey, people, we Black Friday. <laughs> Black Friday. Yeah, yeah, come spend your exactly. money. Exactly. Door crashers or whatever. Basically, stock. We've got <laughs> yeah. overstock. Yeah, yeah. Come buy it. <laughs> uh, let's talk about uh, Roku. Yeah, so Roku is a is a platform like a Android box, just like a cable provider would right. provide you with a box or whatever to, to get cable or TV. Right, it's it's kind of expensive to buy one, hundred bucks, hundred fifty bucks or whatever. They've got some specialty features involved in the Roku um, that allows people to kind of create their own channels. You can do it's sort of a sandbox where you have the ability to play with things and do your own broadcasting and stuff like that if you wanted to. Obviously, I mean, that's that's very small potatoes. They, they do carry some stuff. They carry, I think, uh, Amazon Prime, I believe it is, CBS All Access. They carry YouTube. They, they carry a decent number of things, but so does pretty much your computer. Oh, yeah, exactly. So does every cable provider. So does your tablet. So yeah. does your phone. Yeah. You know, like, so this is just another company in that market space you know, Netflix is really expensive to own. And I think my big, com- it, yeah. yeah, my big comparison to this is that it's, it's much like the 15 cryptocurrencies worth over a billion Bitcoin is too expensive to own. So people automatically start investing in not the best of breed. So if one was to take hold Netflix, IE in this, in this conversation takes hold and is doing a very good job growing internationally, very significant numbers. We've talked about Netflix again, how long can really, really good, uh, like private content, content that Netflix owns proprietary just to Netflix stays so good. Right. We're not sure, right? They no, might build sure. a business off that content being so good. And by the time the business gets profitable, they might find that they've run out of content. Roku doesn't do a whole lot of their own content, if any, you know, like a lot of, I guess, content providers add their own content, but Roku in and of itself isn't doing that. So we had Citron Research come out this week and say that Roku was basically a total joke. It was a bubble, and I kind of I agree to an extent. I think it's a lot of money that can't afford to get into things like Netflix. So they've chosen to get into the also rans, Roku being one of them. Uh, there were forty six dollars a share when Citron Research came out and basically said they were shorting a position in Roku. That was up a hundred and forty percent since November eighth's earnings call. Okay. So, so in less than a month. 
they had gone up 140 percent that's that that's pretty big those are numbers bro oh like, for sure when, when yeah you're talking money that's big money uh citron's got a price target at 28 dollars Roku took a bit of a dip this week. It closed the week out 43.55, so it, it came off a little bit. I would imagine it's kind of off that news. Yeah. When you find out big short firms are out there and they're they're doing that, you are going to have naturally a bit of a pullback from 140% gain in a month. I mean, that's I think that's obviously going to happen. Yeah. That's, that's just the nature of the game we're in, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, there's too many companies getting into streaming, keeping their stuff privatized. We see Disney going ahead and doing this. Disney's really going after 20th Century Fox. They they want a lot of the properties that 20th Century Fox has, yeah. which is going to add to what their streaming content does. you got to assume companies like Disney, they're not going to, they've taken their stuff off of Netflix. They're not going to add that onto Roku. No, they're not. They're not, not going to add ESPN onto there. So eventually Roku's going to find themselves having to compete directly with a company like Netflix, having to create original content, and will they be able to do that? I, I have I, no idea. I don't foresee I have no it. Idea. I don't foresee it no. happening. Right? These are an also-ran company. It's it's great right now. Everything's up. People want to put their money somewhere. It's a growth stock. It, it's got the potential to do some things. You really need to be doing your due diligence on stuff like this. As far as I'm concerned, it's not speculative, but it's not... It's not anything where I'd park. It's not anything where I'd park my money. No, Let's just put it that way. No. I just yeah, just put it out there. I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of it. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Wednesday the 29th, uh, we got an earnings call from uh, Royal Bank of Canada. Yeah. So RBC definitely made amends for what the Bank of Nova Scotia did earlier in the week. Uh, they beat on EPS, beat on revs. Revs were up 12.4 percent year over year. RBC is the biggest bank in Canada by market capitalization. They had a record profit, so the most money they've ever made in a year. Record profit of 11.5 billion dollars. Uh, the wealth management segment up 24 percent. Capital markets up 21 percent. Royal Bank closed the week out 79.81, which is up on earnings. Royal Bank of Canada is a strong bank. They are phenomenally run. They are definitely, probably, best of breed, potentially right through North America. I mean, I know there's a lot of people that own J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs yeah. that are Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, that are going to hear that and say, like, are you kidding me, right? But, I mean, on a, on a case-by-case basis, not on a market capitalization basis, but just on how that individual bank is run, RBC is a phenomenal company, and like I said, up on earnings for the week, seventy nine eighty one. Royal Bank of Canada definitely made up for Bank of Nova Scotia's tepid earnings call earlier in the week, and uh, it seemed like they kind of got the ball rolling for all of Canada, because we had some really good Canadian news, basically to close the whole week right yeah, we out. Did. Yeah, we did. absolutely. Uh, let's move on to Amazon's web service. Yeah, so uh, the Amazon Web Service is basically their cloud storage service. So they already are really big. They've got 32% of all the market share that's out there. And when you compare that to other companies that do a lot of cloud storage, Microsoft's Azure, Microsoft's only got about 14% of market share. Google Cloud has like 6% of market share. So Amazon's Web Service already is really, really big. They signed service agreements in the last week with six major companies. They did. Expedia, the NFL, Disney, Honeywell, Whirlpool, and Time Warner's Turner. Yes. So they signed a lot of companies up to these web service agreements. And Expedia, actually, they signed up. And Expedia is going to move everything over there. So Ex- Oh, there. Yeah, Expedia's got some stuff over with Microsoft. They've got some stuff with Oracle. But they're going to move everything over to Amazon. So this was a really big coup for Amazon. When you talk Disney and NFL, oh, sure. you are talking some serious storage. Data. Oh, yeah. Like, there is data being stored there for sure. Yeah. Really big stuff. Amazon's web service up 42% year over year. But to compare that... Again, we go back to the other companies that we were mentioning that are in the same competitive field as them. They're up 42%. Microsoft's Azure is up 90% year over year. And Google Cloud's up 70% roughly year over year. So while they don't have the market share yet that, that Amazon has... They're definitely making a push. For sure, they are. So Amazon signing up these companies, 
That's what they need. And I mean, we see Amazon moving around into this pharmacy stuff, which is inevitable. Oh, yeah. The, the medical devices. They got Whole Foods on the go. This uh, The Amazon, the, the Echo with, with uh, Alexa. Oh, that's right, yeah. That's moving into business now. So there's gonna, they're going to have a whole business development kit that's going to be available for that. So it's not just going to be for the home. Oh, yeah. That, that should be interesting. Yeah. So you're going to be able to do that for your business, ordering supplies and all that. Oh, so, yeah. Amazon is really moving into everything. Uh, they again, when we're talking the the Black Friday sales, Amazon has Cyber Monday as opposed yeah. to Black Friday. And another record, Cyber Monday for Amazon, broke records at Amazon. Of course it did. So, yeah, of course. Right? Of course. Can, can Amazon do anything <laughs> wrong? I mean, no, Amazon I does everything so. right. They closed the week uh, eleven hundred and sixty-two dollars a share. Nice. <laughs> Expensive. It's still down for the week because. I mean, what could bump that up any further? It's probably time to do another stock split. I mean, they, Bezos probably needs to make this company a little cheaper to get into. Yeah, maybe. But, I mean, maybe they're really trying to just box people out. Just keep it all in the keep, cell. Yeah, keep it to whoever's got it already. Yeah, like, sure, yeah. Why, why uh, maybe, maybe don't rock the boat. Exactly. When everything's why going right, yeah, maybe don't rock the boat. Amazon had a destructive week. I mean... It doesn't reflect in the growth in share price in this week, but when you just think about how much ground they're covering in so many directions, they're a phenomenal company. I am I am such a big proponent of Amazon. I uh, I can't say enough good things. I don't think the market could say enough good things. No, they are they're a force to be reckoned with. Oh, they definitely. I are. I would not want to be in a market space that Amazon's trying to encroach on no. because they are probably going to win. Oh, they will win. Yeah, they're a, they're yeah. going to win. Amazon Web Service <laughs> doing amazing stuff. Cyber Monday, amazing stuff. It was a heck of a week for Amazon. Uh, let's move on to Thursday the thirtieth. Uh, we got a couple earnings calls. Let's start with uh, Toronto Dominion. Yeah. So TD, uh, it wasn't again the greatest earning call. It. it Again, they're Canada's biggest lender. They're a really big bank up here. They missed EPS. They they missed on revs. The revs are up 5.9% year over year. So the EPS and rev miss could easily be just analysts kind of overestimating what they thought they were going to get out of the banks. The banks have been up all year. The banks have been doing really well since the last earnings. So it could be analysts just kind of overpressing the numbers a little bit. But they were still up in a lot of segments. Canadian retail banking up 11% net income. U.S. retail banking up 16% of net income. And TD Bank is all over the United States and growing significantly. TD's big downfall, which wasn't really big at all, was their TD Capital Markets and Investment Banking, which was only down 3%. But TD did close the week 57.79, which was down a little bit from earnings. There's a bit of a drop-off there when you go and take a look at the one-week chart. So, I mean... In a market where the financials in Canada are doing so well and our economy is clearly coming back, missed EPS and missed revs by nominal numbers, but rev numbers being up year over year, and then the the retail banking in both their major segments, Canada and the U.S., being up double-digit percentages, I think it still bodes well for TD. I, I don't see anything wrong with this earnings call, but it just wasn't as flashy as beating on earnings, beating right, on revs. Right, right. When you see that, I mean, and then you talk about rev numbers being up year over year, it just is a lot more impressive. So the, the little bit of EPS and rev miss, it, 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 it stifled the growth of the stock for the week. But the, the economy as a whole, to close out the week, just proved that I think uh, – all these banks are probably doing a good job. We got we've got some other stuff coming. Yeah, we got other stuff coming as regards for to sure. Canada. Yes, big week for Canada. Big week. Big week for Canada. Uh, let's talk about earnings for CIBC. Uh, fifth largest bank in Canada. EPS up eight percent year over year. They beat analyst estimates. Revenues up sixteen percent year over year. Beat analyst estimates. Uh, Canadian personal and small business banking unfortunately down one point four percent. And that's, they're a big Canadian bank. They are not diversified internationally near to the amount that a lot of the other banks are. We've seen, again, Bank of Nova Scotia buying into BBVA's right. Chile. Um, these guys are trying to get into the U.S. They, brought, they bought a company, I believe it's out of Chicago, called Private Bancorp back in June, I think it was, for $5 billion. They changed the name of that to CIBC Bank USA. That gives them a lot more clients, and that definitely helped that rev number of 16% be up. But when you're talking about Canadian personal and small business banking being down 1.4%, that is still their bread and butter. They need to turn that around. 
Um, you see it up with all the other banks. The Canadian personal banking is up. And to see it down at CIBC says that maybe they're not doing as good of a job of attracting customers or they're losing some market share to right. the other banks. I don't actually use CIBC for my personal banking. The company I do use, we've already talked about, they don't do the greatest job either as no, far as my don't. service goes. No. Um, uh, but their U.S. commercial banking was up four to- over four times year over year. Like, it was up significantly. Again, that's very tethered to the private Bancorp purchase of $5 billion. CIBC closed the week at 9547 and that was up for the week. So, apparently, apparently the big beats on EPS and Rev year over year numbers, uh, they put a pretty decent shadow over the Canadian personal and small business miss of 1.4%, which in the big scheme of things is kind of a nominal number. It, it's, it's not a huge number, but when you consider that they cover majority of their ground up here in Canada, you want to see that number increasing every time, yes. especially in a market that seems to be growing really significantly. So that, that worries me a little bit. And I'm a best of breed guy, so I mean, if we're talking banks, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely RBC steer people right. before I'm gonna steer them to to CIBC. Just Royal Royal Banks, just it is it is the bank. Yeah, it is. It is. It is definitely it's definitely is. the 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 top dog. Uh, we have one more story for Thursday. Uh, we have a Costco story. Yeah, cool. Again, this is a lot like the Amazon stuff, right? Uh, how does Costco do anything wrong? Uh, net sales up 13.2% year over year. These were November, just November comparable store sales and net sales numbers right. that came out. And Costco got a pretty good bump off of this, like pretty decent bump up like 11 bucks or 9 bucks or something. They closed the week at 185.13. But it, Costco is just an amazing company. They Everything in bulk, including their growth. It oh, seems yeah. like it, the growth <laughs> is in significant bulk. Uh, comparable store sales went up 10.8% in November year over year. That beat analyst estimates, which were only 7%. So that is a, that is, that's a beat and a half, yeah. right? Like, so anybody under the delusion that Amazon is taking market share from Costco, they're not doing that. It seems like Amazon has moved in a lot of other directions. So when you start talking about retail like Costco or Home Depot, I, yeah. I don't think Amazon's really a competitive threat to them yet. And it seems like Amazon's steering their ship in a lot of other directions. And you can see it by the growth on the, the Costco numbers. For sure. Um, g- comparable store sale growth just by region. Uh, USA up 10.2%. Canada, which obviously up here, where the economy's starting to really turn it around, up 13.8%. And international up 11.1%. Costco is a phenomenal company, and just everything they do seems to work out well. They're they're run so well. They're from the CEO down, from the the hiring from within. It's it's just a well run, well oiled machine. Costco is smart enough to not stock too many too many products. They yeah. don't overextend themselves. The Kirkland brand is a really really good brand. really good brand yeah. really good brand of products. Uh, I, I believe some of the stuff by Kirkland is made by like Kimberly Clark. I mean they they make they make really good stuff at Kirkland. It's it's a it's a well run company at Costco. Phenomenal. It's a high share price one hundred eighty five thirteen. It's pricey to get into. Oh yeah. But I mean if uh, if you're looking for a co- if you're looking for very very solid companies in an economy where everything's going up, even your even your blue chips, they, they, they're going up that are basically just dividend pairs. Costco is excellent. Excellent. Couldn't say enough good things about Costco and Amazon. Okay, that wraps up the news for uh, Thursday the 30th. Let's move on to Friday, December the 1st. Uh, we have an earnings call from uh, National Bank of Canada. December the 1st. It is Christmas season. It is Christmas season. Wow. There are radio stations playing nothing but Christmas music. All the time. Christmas lights all over my name. I have no Christmas lights up. No, me either. None. My no. kids and wife are in uh, Los Angeles. They're in Disneyland. They're actually yeah. at Universal Studios today. I am. I have not put up any Christmas lights since they've no. been gone. No, they come back tomorrow. They're coming back to an unfestive <laughs> household. Um, so National Bank of Canada on December 1st reported earnings. EPS and REVs both beat the street. It's, it's not the biggest bank in the world. It's definitely the sixth biggest bank in Canada. Um, they closed the week at 50-13. That was up. Uh, on the week, all segments were up though. They they had a record year for profits. Uh, they raised their dividend two cents to sixty cents a share. National Bank of Canada just riding the backs of what is a very very strong economy in Canada that seems to really be pushing the envelope for making a significant comeback internationally. We need Canada to branch out and get some more diversification. We need to stop being so 
financial and industrial strong. We need to find some other segments to really become international growth companies. Right. But other than that, the the country as a whole is coming back, and I think that's uh, that's probably going to ring true in this next story we're going to talk about. Yeah, our actually next story is about the Canadian economy. Yeah. So unemployment numbers, unbelievable. I mean, they they added okay. So in November, the Canadian economy added 79,500 net new jobs. Now that doesn't sound like a lot. If you're from the United States and you're listening to this, we're, we're not near as populous as you guys no. are. You guys are close to 400 million. We're like 37 million, right? So 79,500 net new jobs in November. The analyst estimates were only for 10,000. Wow. So that beat analyst estimates by 69,500. Oh, yeah. Our unemployment number dropped 0.4% in a month. Wow. From 6.3% Pretty impressive. to 5.9%. That unemployment number, that 5.9%, yep. that's the lowest unemployment number we've had in Canada since February of 2008. Holy. That is pre-financial crisis. That's pre-Bear Stearns, yep. pre-Lehman Brothers, pre auto collapse pre the whole nine yards this is a such a significant number for how well the canadian economy is doing it's a 12th straight month in canada with net new jobs so this isn't yep. a one month anomaly this is 12 months in a row where we've gained jobs in this economy canada is on its way back we have added 441,000 400 full-time jobs in the labor market in Canada yep. in this year, in 2017. Wow, really? That is the most, and then we're not done. we got a month left. We do, yeah. That is the most added in 18 years. Holy. That is significant numbers. That is. And I think it because of all this, which sounds fantastic, that means this is basically only a matter of time until the Bank of Canada raises interest rates again. They're going to raise Probably, it. Probably, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah, going to yeah. raise it off the yeah. 1%. Like it, It's going up. It, it, I think they were probably going to pump the brakes a little bit and not go for it on the next meeting. I would imagine on the next meeting now, it's probably a break even if they raise it or not. Right. Whereas I thought before, we'd probably get through another Bank of Canada meeting without raising it. Now I think for sure we're probably going to get one. Yeah, I think yeah, personally, maybe, yeah, I, think probably. Steve, I think Stephen Palaz of the Bank of Canada... He, we were waiting. They were waiting. We, I say we. I like. I'm at the Bank of Canada. <laughs> they were waiting for, for the right type of numbers to say that the economy is stable enough. Financials came in good this week. Good enough. This number here, I think, significantly shows that the economy is growing up the, on the private side, on the public side. Yeah, things are growing. Bank of Canada is probably going to raise those interest rates next time. Uh, and anybody who yeah. has to redo a mortgage here pretty quickly is Ouch. probably going to feel it because that's oh, going to yeah. be three raises in the past, what, nine months roughly? It's, yep. Yeah, yep. it's big, big raises going big on. Big raises, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but Canadian unemployment is at 5.9%. you got the option to go out and basically get a job anywhere you want in Canada yeah, right sure. now. Right Everybody now. apparently yep. is hiring. I my. There's a hiring freeze here in the city of Edmonton. Yeah. We're not even hiring full time where I work. You know, I, I work for the, the municipality here. Right, yeah. And you we're do. not hiring full time at all no, that I know of. Up, right? Yeah, it's completely filled up. But apparently, yeah. maybe going into the hiring season next year, if uh, if a lot of employment moves into other sectors, because when I first started where I worked, there was a lot of attrition. You'd see a lot of people come and go. For sure, yeah. And there was a lot of full-time positions because people had the option to go out and find other well-paying jobs that like get paid relatively yeah. well. Uh, but now it hasn't been like that because obviously our provinces, we're running such a deficit here. Oh, yeah. With the yeah the political party we have in power here in the province. it's We're, we're not near the province we used to be. No, but, no. But this number is across the board. This is not a number just localized to Toronto or Vancouver. This is a number that's across all provinces and territories so hopefully the province of alberta comes back strong we see the oil field start to come back you know it's been coming back for a little bit now we'd, little bit, yeah. we'd like to see it come back even stronger than this not that i want to see a lot of attrition at my place of employment you end up having to retrain people that's not the most fun no but for people as a whole across canada i think the main thing is people having options we yes. don't want people who want jobs who want 
good, solid, well-paying jobs and are willing to work hard at them. We don't want those people being stifled out of the actual employment. We want, we want yeah. people, yeah, yeah. The, you know, like we want people to be able to go out and find the jobs they want. And these numbers bode very well for those people. Well, that wraps up the news for the week for Friday. Yeah, well, I mean, but, okay, on Friday, we still had a little bit of stuff. So there's U.S. tax reform is, as, is, yeah. is not being settled, right? We, we It's, it's going to end up probably early 2018. We're going to find out how this is going to end up. But it sounds like if it goes through, if it passes the way that the Republicans are trying to push it through, there's going to be a lot less taxes on the really, really high-end company that are taxed really high. I believe Goldman Sachs came out a list of 49 companies I believe it was that we're going to probably see really significant benefits, jumps in EPS and revs okay. because of these new tax reform bills, if they get passed, that are going to help benefit companies that pay really, really high tax brackets. There's yeah. some companies that pay you know 50 plus percent. Uh, some of the companies that were mentioned, AT&T, we talked yep. about earlier, Goodyear, there's a bunch of other companies in this. Uh, but Goldman Sachs came out with a report on that. That's definitely something to look into because if this tax bill gets passed, it's going to affect a lot of these companies. And you could imagine if... If the tax bill seems like it's going to go through, which right now it's dicey, but if it goes through, a lot of that stuff is going to get priced in quickly to these share prices because people are going to know oh, all of a sudden AT&T is going to get 5% yeah, yeah. tax benefit next year on top of what they already have. That's going to get priced into that share price relatively quickly. You're going to see share prices for a lot of those companies probably run up a little bit. A little bit. A little bit, yeah. So just, yeah, that closed out the week. That did close out yeah, the week. Yeah, that closed out but the week. But we do have a story that just came out today. About other, other than the Bitcoin. Other than the Bitcoin. Other than Bitcoin yes. going crazy on Sunday. Yes. People had nothing to do on Sunday. No. No shopping left. Black Friday no. was over. Done. Went to church. Yep. Came home. Then the Church of Bitcoin. The Church, church of, of Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. I went to the gym. <laughs> they went to Coinbase. <laughs> yeah. And everybody was, was moving around a bunch of money. Bitcoin went up a bunch, <laughs> yeah. down a bunch, up a bunch again. But where's another story? Uh, CVS to buy Aetna. Aetna, absolutely. Yeah. We've been hearing about this for a while. $69 billion is the price point. It's a, it's a cash stock deal. Uh, Aetna's valued at $207 a share in this deal, which is considerable premium over the price that they closed the week at, which is $181.30, $0.31 a share. That's a big jump. We're, that is. Yeah, $26, yeah. right? That's a, that's a big premium. And that, the price has been... Kind of creeping up on the the idea that CVS was going to buy them anyways. Right. Aetna is a health insurance company. CVS obviously does a lot of pharmacy, yes. pharmaceutical yep. stuff like that. So a, the complete combining of two pharmaceutical type of companies. And this kind of this news came out weeks ago when we first heard about Amazon moving in to pharmaceutical business. Yeah, right. They got thirteen licenses across thirteen states. Even though they've mentioned that two of the states, believe Indiana and Tennessee, they're not going to use those licenses for pharmacy. They're going to use them for medical devices. Okay. Yep. This was kind of uh, this is them. This is CVS hedging their bets. Oh, CVS yeah, is trying yeah. to make sure that they're as entrenched in the medical community as they can be, knowing that as. Amazon gets into the pharmacy business and you can go to Whole Foods and get your pharmacy stuff. Right. You can use Amazon Go. Your Amazon's yeah. going to be able to ship you stuff. You know, CBS, CBS does direct retail pharmacies. That's their big bread and butter. Yeah. That's going to impact them directly. Oh, for sure. So now moving into health insurance with Aetna definitely helps them sidestep a little bit of what Amazon's going to be pressing up on them yeah. for. Uh, so people that, that own shares at Aetna right now, what the deal is, they're going to receive $145 in cash for every share. Then they're also going to receive 0.8378 shares of CVS. So just a little under a share yeah. of CVS and $145 in cash. Nice. So pretty good coup for the people over at, uh, over at Aetna that own shares there. Pretty good premium they're being paid. Um, second half of 2018 is what we're hearing for a close on this deal. So still yes. way, way in the future. Yeah. Who knows? North Korea could, you know, oh, all sorts happen. of things yeah. could happen, right? No, you never know what's going to happen. But but this is, a, this is a heck of a deal and a big close for CVS to get this done on a Sunday night. You're probably going to see that Aetna share price jump up tomorrow for sure. For sure. Uh, they clo CVS closed the week at 180. No, that was... Uh, Aetna closed the week 181 31. But I, I think we're going to see the CVS price jump considerably. We're going to see Aetna probably jump. Yeah. This is big news for both these companies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is this is helping CVS, like I said, sidestep Amazon. And that's that's ultimately the name of the game is every time somebody with a lot of money and a lot of uh, pull gets into your industry. Not that CVS doesn't have pull, but Amazon does. And Amazon, with their ability to ship things logistically, the setups that they have, 
probably way stronger than anything CBS has. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you're going to need to do something to hedge your bets. CBS doing their job hedging their bets with Aetna. And that's it. That's it. That's it. We went, it was under an hour this week. They're this just, one was, yeah. It's Christmas season. It is. There just yeah. isn't as much news out there. Not right now, no. You know, like there's all this, uh, there's this political flim-flamming going on. Flim-flamming. I in like the that United word. States. Yeah. There's a lot of that. That got, got a lot of coverage this week. And then obviously Bitcoin taking up a lot of coverage oh, yeah. and the tax reform. You know, even all the really good news out of Canada. I've never seen anything on the U.S. websites, CNBC or Bloomberg, covering any no, of that. No. Even though, I mean, I thought those were significant numbers. The financials never got covered. Yeah. It was just a slow week. People coming off Black Friday, they got a shopping hangover. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and everybody's just completely destroyed, right? It's, <laughs> yeah. It's winter. Everybody's getting ready for Christmas. I'm on holidays already. Yes, there you are. I'm on holidays right through holidays, Christmas. Holidays, yeah. Right through Christmas. Right through Christmas. Not too bad. Not no, too not bad. at all. Boxing Day for triple time. Nice. Hard. Hard. Very hard yeah. work. Oh, yeah. Not looking forward to it at all. But until then, I'm going to enjoy my time off. It's the Christmas season. Uh, we did what we were thankful for for Thanksgiving last week. Uh, for Christmas, I just, uh, I, same thing. Thankful Me for, too. Thankful yeah. for my family and friends. Yeah. and. Uh, all our listeners out there, we, we love dealing with everybody. And we, we hope this is informative. We hope we're helping people out doing this stock breakdown. Every week, kind of a nice weekly recap. Just giving you the news. We're, any kind of these earnings calls or anything, we've done videos on all these. We, we've covered all this in a, in a much more extensive way if you want to go back and look at the videos. Uh, but this gives a nice little wrap-up if you're sitting there, you're doing some paperwork. Or, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, you're just doing something. You want to listen to this in the background and just hear me ramble on about a bunch of numbers. This is at least giving you a little bit of a hint as to what happened, right? Yeah, for sure. How was your week otherwise? Excellent. Your week was excellent? Excellent. You're way, you look way, way hyped up now compared to when we started. When we started, you were all frazzled. Well, I got right into it. Yeah, I thought, I didn't know what was going on. I thought you were having potatoes oh. thrown at you <laughs> out here or something. Not today. Not today. Not today. But it was a, it was a good one now. Oh, it's a good now one. Now you oh, look yeah. hyped up. What was a good one? Definitely. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Thanks for hosting. Thank you. Thanks you're for having ex- me. You're an excellent host. Oh, you're uh... like the Alex Trebek of the financial industry. I like that. Yeah. I really do like that. The financial industry, man, needs an Alex Trebek. <laughs> it he, definitely does. He's Canadian. He is Canadian. You That's right. a nice mustache. I could. You could. I do. You're not going to get that quaff of hair. No. Has, I no. wonder if that's a hair piece. Ooh. He's had that nice hair for a long, long time. time. Maybe he's got good genetics. Maybe, yeah. yeah nice we, and thick. we don't. We are going bald. bald. I wonder if that's being involved in money. I wonder if money makes Maybe. you go bald. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. I'm Anthony from Wall Street Breakdown. We thank all you guys for joining us this week. Podcast number seven. We uh, we love our fans. We hope this is helpful. We want to see you guys back next weekend for another podcast, podcast number eight. We will be back this week, Monday to Friday and Saturday and Sunday if we have to, with videos through all the important information. We've got Bank of Montreal earnings coming out this week. Uh, I believe Funko's got earnings this week. There's a couple other companies, but earnings season definitely has slowed down considerably. Yes. But we are going to be back. We are going to find some news to talk about. We definitely are. Because I love these guys and I just want to talk to for them. For sure. Absolutely. Do. Thank you very much podcast number seven's in the bag you guys have an excellent sunday and an excellent start to your week we will see you tomorrow